Welcome back to the Quick Start Guide for Recovery from Addiction and Co-Occurring Disorders. I'm your host, Dr. Donnelly Snipes. Today in this unit, we're going to start talking even more in depth about relapse prevention planning. You've explored relapse warning signs at each stage of recovery, triggers for your addiction and mental health issues and ways to address them, and protective factors like protective physical things that you can do like getting enough sleep and how you can remember to do those in all of the prior units. In this part, you're going to review the types of relapse. So we're kind of wrapping it all up and putting a bow on it. Remember that relapse is the return to something that has been previously stopped, whether that's depression or anxiety or anger or addiction. Relapse is multidimensional, just like your triggers are. There are physical, emotional or affective, cognitive, environmental, and relationship aspects to relapse. Remember, a relapse is when you start returning to any of these people, places, things, behaviors, or feeling states. Just because you start to relapse in the physical dimension or in the relationship dimension doesn't mean you have to continue down that path to a full-blown relapse. The beauty of recognizing the signs and symptoms of relapse in each of these areas is it lets you uh, catch it sooner and start doing things that are going to help you prevent a full-blown relapse. Think about your physical and behavioral aspects of your recovery as well as relapse. In physical relapse, you've stopped taking care of your health and body. A lot of times we use the acronym HALT, hungry, angry, lonely, and tired. You start feeling sick, tired, restless, or your pain, including headaches and stomach aches, starts increasing. Think about times when you've relapsed before. You know, how did your body respond? What was going on that told you that you were headed down that road to relapse? Sometimes one of the earliest signs for people is just apathy or exhaustion. It's important to increase your awareness of these behaviors for early intervention. So, for example, maybe you started staying up to watch your favorite TV show that came on way late at night so you weren't getting enough sleep and you were starting to get run down. Well, what can you do about it? Record the show or watch it on a streaming service so you don't have to stay up till 10 o'clock at night if you have to be up at 5 in the morning. Maybe you started drinking more soda and coffee at work. Well, that may indicate that you are getting run down and you're trying to get that pep from caffeine. Start carrying a water bottle and lemon juice packets and also assess whether you're getting enough sleep. Maybe you started working 60-hour weeks again. This is so common for people. When they start feeling better, they're like, okay, I can go back to doing what I used to do. Uh Uh-uh. No. What you used to do is probably, are probably some of the things that contributed to your problem in the first place, whether it's depression or anxiety or addiction. Explore the necessity of working those hours and finding Find ways to eliminate, delegate, and prioritize. You know, try to pare it down to 40 hours. Figure out how you can be more efficient. See what you can do. If you can't, you know, you may want to evaluate whether that job or that position is really in your best interest for your long-term recovery. Spend about 30 minutes thinking about what signs exist for you that you are beginning a physical relapse? How can you increase your awareness of these behaviors for early intervention? Maybe keeping a log of how many hours you're working. You know, there are probably signs and symptoms that occur before each relapse that you've had. And it's important to recognize what those things are. So when they start to happen, notice I said start When they start to happen, you can catch it early and do something to address it. What things have you done in the past to address these issues? What things have you done to prevent yourself from becoming run down, to prevent yourself from feeling excessive pain, from, you know, anything that may be going on here? Affective relapse or emotional relapse 
is when you find that your emotions have just become unpleasant. You you have apathy, you don't really feel like doing much, or you may be angry, anxious, depressed. You know, you're just feeling crappy emotionally. You're not feeling the happiness, you're just feeling the sadness or the anger. You find it difficult to experience pleasure. Your outlook starts to become super pessimistic. Think about what you've done in the past to address these issues. So for example, when I get cranky, it helps too. You notice I didn't say enraged. I said cranky. I want to address it when the when the emotion is at a mild state before I get all the way down to being super pessimistic and just enraged at the world all the time. Spend about 30 minutes thinking about the signs or behaviors that you're beginning an affective relapse. What signs and symptoms do you see in yourself? It may be that you just don't want to do anything. It may be that you are getting depressed easier. Now, remember, there are times things are going to happen. You may have a death in the family or something that may trigger grief and overwhelming um, emotions. It's important to address those things so they don't lead to an ongoing affective relapse. It's important to recognize that pain exists, unfortunately. Bad things happen, unfortunately. However, you need a plan for when they do. How do you keep it from moving you backwards in your recovery, whether it's depression or anger or addiction? How can you increase your awareness of these unpleasant feelings for early intervention? This is where mindfulness comes in so strongly because so often we live on autopilot and we don't really notice from day to day. We get up, we take a shower, we eat breakfast, we go to work, we come home rinse and repeat. And we don't stop to check in with ourselves to say, am I feeling happy? What can you do to remind yourself to check in, to figure out how you're feeling? So when you start feeling irritable, when you start feeling blah, you can start doing things to turn that around. What things have you done in the past to address these issues? We've all had times when we felt angry or unhappy in some way. When that happened, what are some things that help you start to feel better? For me, I'll go outside, I'll watch squirrels, they make me happy, you know, whatever. It doesn't take much to make me happy. Um, I'll go online, I'll turn on YouTube, videos of babies laughing. There's one that the caregiver is ripping paper and the baby's just laughing hysterically. I don't know why. But that always brings a smile to my face. And then addressing the underlying issues is also important. You know, you can do things to make you, yourself feel happier in the moment, but it's also important to address what is it that's causing me to feel apathetic or angry or anxious? Because you need to address those root issues too so they don't fester. In cognitive relapse, the brain, the thinking part of you really wants to stay positive, but part of you is struggling with tolerating that distress. Signs of cognitive relapse include focusing on the negative, ruminating, or just really turning that stuff over and nurturing negative thoughts, um, and having a pessimistic, helpless, or hopeless attitude. If you had an addiction, you know, we're not just talking about mental health issues or addiction. We're talking about both. So if you also had an addiction, you may be thinking about people, places, and things that you used with, glamorizing your past use, lying to yourself and others, justifying, minimizing your behaviors, or just having a screw it attitude. Cognitive relapse is often referred to as stinking thinking, and it's important to notice when you are starting to go down that road because you'll need to balance those thoughts out. Again, spend about 30 minutes thinking about what are the signs or behaviors that you're beginning a cognitive relapse for as it uh, uh, applies to your addiction, your depression, your anxiety. How can you increase your awareness of these thoughts for early intervention? Sometimes 
before addiction relapse, there's a depression relapse or an anger relapse. Again, it's really early, really important to catch these things early so you can ask yourself, what's causing this and what can I do to improve the next moment and get back headed in the right direction, that good orderly direction. What things have you done in the past to address these issues? When you have uh, thoughts that contribute to you feeling angry or helpless or hopeless, what have you done to change those thoughts, to address those thoughts? For example, eliminating all or none thinking, finding exceptions. Relapse comes in many different forms. A relapse in one area often means that you're on the path to relapse in other areas. Physical relapse means reverting to old behaviors and not taking care of your physical health and needs. Affective relapse means having difficulty feeling pleasant emotions. And cognitive relapse means engaging in negative and or hopeless and helpless thinking patterns instead of finding serenity.